Welcome to the war. So this is an entirely impromptu video. Was not planning on making this, um, but the stars aligned and it seems like a cool opportunity. So uh, for those of you who watched my last battle report, uh, I was using Warhammer Ancient Battles or Warhammer Historical Rules. Um, and what I love about that game is all of the... Uh, ranks and flanks, the, the units, the blocks of infantry all lined up. Um, but you'll notice in this little setup, I've got my models uh, pulled out of those uh, um, bases or their movement trays um, from uh, Oathmark, and I'm uh, playing a skirmish game. What skirmish game? Well, I forgot I ordered this, but uh, my second edition book of Lion Rampant uh, by Daniel Mersey showed up. Um, I really enjoy playing the first version of this, uh, what I think is referred to as the Blue Book uh, rules. Um, when I lived in California a few years ago uh, with my, my gaming group there and friends. Um, so I am excited to give the second edition version of this a try. Uh, and I thought it would be really neat um, to, uh, to to play through the through the game and follow on in in some way from uh, the last battle report that I played, where spoiler alert, the general, this guy Lord Clifford, was uh, didn't didn't make it through the end of the game uh, on the winning side. Let's just put it that way. So I thought we would try playing um, one of the missions or scenarios from this book uh, called The Fugitive. Uh, that basically sees a captive, uh, in this case, Lord Clifford, having escaped from his captors, uh, this group of, of Yorkists, uh, uh, for, or from people, uh, army from the House of York. He's escaped. He has made it onto this, uh, out into the, into the field, into the woods here, and it's up to the forces of the House of Lancaster, in this case, led by the Honorable Duke of Somerset, Lord Henry Beaufort, or Beaufort, I'm just going to refer to him as uh, Lord Somerset from now on, uh, I'm just going to refer to him as the Duke of Somerset from now on, for uh, sake of pronunciation. Uh, he is trying to rescue him. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as I said, the, uh, the House of York is looking to get him back, uh, led by none other than William Neville. So... I'm going to get everything set up here. Uh, I played a lot of first edition Lion Rampant. I'm hoping this is sort of like muscle memory. I do seem to remember, like, turns go, go pretty fast here. I'm not going to record a, a turn by turn game. It'll be kind of a phase by phase. I'll let both sides go. Um, hopefully, we don't, uh, uh, this game doesn't end uh, super quickly with um, uh, Lord Clifford being discovered on, on the first, at the first, uh, set of woods at the back there. I'll play through how this scenario works out as we go, but, um, I'll get the forces set up and we'll get rolling. Okay. I've deployed the forces. Um, and I realize I need to do a little rundown here and try to fit in a, a number of, of things, talking points. So first of all, let me just talk about the, the scenario here. So, we're going to be playing, or I'm going to be playing. This is a solo game, <laughs> but uh, I'm imagining you're along with me. So uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to be um, playing this along the, the edge of the, or the um, the short edges of the table. So we're, you know, convening in the middle here. Uh, essentially, in this scenario, uh, we're going to imagine that Lord Clifford has escaped and is hiding in these woods somewhere. You'll notice these trees are set out in, in groups of three. There are six groups. And essentially, uh, the, it's the defender's job, in this case, the, the House of Lancaster on Lord Clifford's side, it's their job to search the woods and basically find him, rescue him, and then bring him off of their table edge. Meanwhile, the forces of York and uh, William Neville are looking to stop that. They can't uh, actually uncover or discover, as it, as it were, um, Lord Clifford, but they're going to do their, their darndest to, to prevent him from getting off the table one way or the other. So that, that's the kind of the, the broad uh, objective of the game here. I know in my previous battle report with um, uh, the Warhammer Ancient Battles, I, I set out uh, kind of a, a game plan, a battle plan for each side um, just to, to create some conversation, debate, and uh, figure out or, or explain at least what I'm doing uh, with each of these forces. 
I don't think I'm really going to do that here. I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm like learning the rules as we go. I, I, I think uh, this is a little going to be a little bit more unpredictable. And, you know, it's a new addition to the rules. I want to talk about that. So I'm not looking to, uh, to you know, instill any uh, tactical advice or tactical thinking here. I'll, I'll go as I can. Like, look, I've, I've put the arches on the, or the bowmen on, on the sides of the hill. They're going to look to support. Uh, so are these guys, I've got the, the heavy hitting stuff in the middle, in the center. So, you know, broad, basic, uh, you know, uh, planning like that, but, uh, not going to get too far into the, into the tactics of this, uh, to see how it all plays out. I think arguably this is more just like a fun narrative game, uh, and a chance to, to road test the new rules. So, um, let's do this. Uh, oh, you know what? Before I continue, one last thing, the rules, this book, I got it over here. Um, is a uh, very comprehensive, far more. It's it's a significantly bigger uh, book and a hardcover book than um, the the version one was. It's very unique, I would say, in my experience, in that a lot of the rules it gives, and certainly like improvements to rules, new additions of rules, they're all kind of described as sort of optional, like. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, here's how the old rule was. And full credit to that. I like the flexibility there. Just, again, for the interests of consistency. I don't, you know what? Before I go on, I'll give an example. Uh, every unit needs to be three inches apart. So there's three-inch gaps between each of these units. You can see these, these clumps of men. Same over there. There's an optional rule. You should make that one inch. Um, okay, cool. Love it. Uh, same thing. I understand in the you know in, in uh, first edition, uh, you're, we're going to be rolling like activation tests, and if you for each unit, if you fail an activation test, goes over to your opponent. Um, in this version now, they've made it, or or Daniel Mersey has made it so that if you fail an activation, you don't automatically end your turn. It's just that unit doesn't get to activate. And I know some of the later versions of his rules, I think, is it the men who would be kings is like that. Um, maybe rebels and patriots. I can't remember. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm going to just, for consistency's sake, and for the fact that this is a new edition, I'm going to play it as it's, as it's written and intended for this second edition. So even if I don't like a rule, like I actually quite like the idea that you can't, you know, once you fail an activation, it's your opponent's turn. I'm not going to play that. We'll just uh, we'll just let this play itself out with the new rules. Um, I mean, just just see how it feels. Uh, so, all right, let's get into the forces. This should be super quick. So, uh, I've got a unit of archers uh, for the uh, sorry, and this is the, uh, the the house of York here. So, unit of archers, unit of uh, elite infantry, and I've given them the um, fearsome. Special rule, they, they get that for an extra two points. Uh, we've got a unit of heavy cavalry, the Hobelars. I know I, I, my thought would have been that those are light cavalry, but they are actually described as, as heavy cavalry. They're not elite cavalry like barded knights, but they're still heavy. I guess being this later in the period, that, that sort of makes sense. Then we've got our unit of billmen here representing heavy infantry and another unit of, of archers over here. So. That's their force and pretty basic stuff here. Um, and then over on Lancaster's side, the crossbowmen finally made it to the battle. Yay! Uh, so I didn't get to use them in my, my last battle report. So we've got a unit of crossbows, a unit of heavy uh, infantry, um, six uh, or, or a unit here of elite infantry uh, representing the foot knights. The general there has the courageous special rule. Let's him reroll a courage test. Behind, we've got those dastardly handgunners. Um, there are rules in the new version for handgunners. I like that. I don't think they were in the first version, which I was, uh, you know, wanting to play Wars of the Roses. It was my first start. Um, uh, and they didn't have rules for them, so I'm glad they're in there now. Uh, and then lastly, yeah, another unit of, of archers. So um, a little more missile-based on this side. A little more... Or, a little more balanced on this side, I would say. They've got some some infantry, some cavalry, and some archers. So I'm going to get things started here with the first turn, um, and uh, I'll regroup after that happens. So here we go. As uh, 
luck would have it, the first turn uh, is a good point for me to uh, bring up my my correction. So forget everything I said uh, about uh, the the activation uh, just can or ending that uh, units uh, active or turn. Uh, it does still say in the rules the um, the uh, end uh, unfailing an activation test it causes the end of your turn. There's just this. Auditor rule for Fera. So I guess I watched, I must have watched, I think it was like a War Games Illustrated video. I guess I, that is the optional version of the rule. I'm going to play it as written, So meaning uh, if you fail an activation, then that is going to end your turn. Uh, and as luck would have it, the, uh, the cavalry here rolled a four, they needed a five, and the knights rolled a four, needing a five. So that was turn one, absolutely nothing happened. Let's just bump on to turn two. Okay, next turn, and I, I realize this is turn two, but turns are gonna go so quickly in this game, um, I'm just gonna keep saying next turn. So uh, in this uh, f uh, turn, everyone was able to advance on both sides. Uh, I'll go down there in a second, but um, for uh, Lancaster, they pushed everyone forward, um, except the handgunners uh, failed to activate, even using the um, the general's uh, or the hero's reroll. So. Uh, everyone pushed this, you know, the crossbows on the left flank getting up on the hill, right flank uh, of the archers getting up on the hill, um, and then the two units of infantry in the middle are pushing forward. Uh, effectively the same scenario or situation happened here, except on this side the bowmen failed their activation, including the general's reroll. Um, but the archers, again, looking to advance on the hill, the cavalry pushing forward into the woods. Uh, elite infantry or the knights behind and the uh, other archers on the other side getting up on that hill so i think in the next turn we might see some some rolling here uh here we go okay the main action in this turn the foot knights made it in contact with this little copse of woods or or glade <laughs> and uh lord clifford was not there so on they go searching for him in the next Two sets. You can see here I'm, I'm planning on the foot knights and the archers going kind of um, this way to, towards this set of trees and the, the billmen coming around to this set of trees with the crossbows in support. Uh, handgunners were able to activate this time, but they're really kind of playing catch up at this point. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, everybody activated for York or for the House of York, um, the, knight, uh, the heavy cavalry. Uh, starting to really push forward with that that 10 inch move uh, well into the, the thick of the woods here um, as you can see so uh, I think we're probably a turn or two away from any hand-to-hand -hand combat but we might see some shooting soon let's see on to the next turn okay at the end of this turn uh, everything on the Yorkist side was able to activate arches up to the hill Billman following behind. Uh, probably most interestingly, the heavy cavalry have now positioned themselves that they will be able to get a charge, I think, in the next turn into those knights if they choose to. Uh, that will certainly give um, uh, both forces something to think about. And it's likely also going to hamper because you're, this side will get the first turn. Uh, that's likely going to hamper their efforts to um, search or move into a search range of the rest of these woods. However, the, um, the foot knights here uh, do have some support from the from the archers uh, if, if they were to get attacked. I think that, that might give the heavy cavalry something to think about. Um, this side, the, um, the uh, billmen were able to advance a little more. They will be in range, I think movement range, to get in touch point and search these woods to see if Laura Clifford is there. However, on this side, the uh, the crossbows failed their activation um, despite the reroll, and uh, which meant the handgunners who hadn't, hadn't elected to activate yet didn't get to go either. So next turn, some things to think about. And in this turn, I was simply reminded of why I love this game. So, uh, the heavy cavalry on Lancaster side decided not to advance. They just held, uh, hoping to um, pounce on any unsuspecting unit that may come in their way. Uh, also, arguably for forcing the uh, 
the foot knight's hand. However, the um, other than that, the knight, the foot knight's advanced on this side. Uh, uh, the uh, archer's advanced, um, but then we fail the test over here. Um, I think it was for the for the um, for the longbowman on the hill up there. They failed their test on this side. Uh, the bowman advanced to the second set of woods. Uh, rolled not high enough to uh, to uncover Lord Clifford. Uh, however, the archers found him. They got him. There he is. Great second activation. So we now have uh, Lord Clifford, uh, our our prisoner, our our leader, our general. He's um, he's been discovered, and now we've got to get him off the table. Uh, only problem: the foot knights <laughs> twice failed their uh, activation. End of the turn. So they're not in a good position to uh, to support. Meanwhile, again, the hand gunners lagging behind. The uh, crossbowmen didn't get to go. Um, so this is uh, posing some really interesting uh, uh, scenarios for the next for the next round or the next turn. Let's see what happens here. Those those um, heavy cavalry certainly have their work cut out for them uh, to to catch to catch old Clifford and bring him back to. Uh, Back to the castle, wherever that may be. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. The chase is on. So we and we also had our first casualties of the game. Uh, the Yorkist side uh, inflicted uh, two uh, casualties on the archer unit uh, that is uh, holding the Lord Clifford token, um, fairly ineffective. And then the archers over there in the top right inflicted a casualty on the, the billman there. Uh, but meanwhile, hard press over on this side as the uh, archers carrying Lord Clifford uh, hot tail it out of, out of there or high tail it out of there. Uh, the cavalry have, have swung around and are looking to, to head them off now. They are over a move away um, and the, those foot knights there are pressing in on them. But I think they're going to try and, and, and kind of swing around, get out of their way, not just head straight for them, but just keep out of out of range of those knights so that they can get a clean charge um, and hopefully, let's see, take them down. Meanwhile, uh, everything else uh, is looking to advance over to this side of the table pretty much. Uh, the, the hand gunners activating, uh, they're going to try to form a little bit of a, of a speed bump um, for when, when units get over to this side. The crossbows there, though, at the top left of the screen, um, they failed their activation, so they didn't get to do anything. Um, and, yeah, the archers are not going to be, uh, with with Lord Clifford, are not going to be hanging around looking to shoot anything. They are just going to try to run as fast as they can to get off the table. So, uh, hot pursuit, lots going on. Excited to see what happens in the next turn. Okay, so I'm bringing this uh, report in, or this term report, uh, midway through, important uh, things are happening here. So, and I want to show some dice rolling. So, uh, just quickly on the Lancastrian side, everything activated except the uh, the longbowman over there. They failed their activation uh, out of range of the commander. So, end of the turn. But the bowman advanced. The uh, longbowman on this side advanced. The uh, cavalry advanced. Uh, they're still not quite within range or charge distance there but skirting around the edge of uh, the knights or the foot knights at the top there. However, as you can see, we've got a duel to figure out. So um, how this works, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, the, the, and the, the duel has been accepted. So we are going to see uh, William Neville go toe to toe with, uh, with uh, the Duke of Somerset, as I, as I mentioned. Um, this is resolved with the roll of three dice per side. Uh, fives and sixes are hits, and they count as, uh, you know, whoever has the highest amount at the end is the victor. So the white rose of York rolled no fives or sixes. The red rose of Lancaster doesn't roll either. It's a tie. Um, so I think uh, each unit just goes back uh, to its unit, to a, or each model goes back to its unit, and we fight again. Now, that was a little anticlimactic. But uh, anyway, I'm going to finish the turn, and uh, let's see how this shakes out. Okay, just concluding that turn. So after that fairly inconclusive duel, uh, that unit of foot knights couldn't activate. The billman, however, did, uh, did manage to pile into 
that unit of foot knights, uh, but they didn't fare so well. They they lost three. The knights lost one. Uh, courage tests were passed, but uh, the uh, the billmen had to to retreat a little bit there. Uh, other than that, the crossbows uh, decided that the action was going to be all unfolding on this side, so started to move over. The handgunners moved up slightly, um, looking to hopefully get some shots in on the the. Um, Heavy cavalry over there, and uh, that's pretty much how the turn ended. So let's see what happens next. Okay, as you might have expected, William Neville wants blood. Uh, so he uh, declared another duel against the Duke of Somerset. Let's just quickly see how that plays out. So I'll roll uh, Somerset's dice first. Again, looking for those fives and sixes. Didn't get any. Uh-oh. Uh, William Neville has uh, inflicted one more and, and killed the Duke of Somerset. So we're gonna have, that's gonna trigger some, some courage tests, I think across the, uh, the force, uh, and that's gonna certainly have an impact on the game. So I'll play that out and uh, see how this turn concludes. Okay, things are going uh, from bad to worst for the House of Lancaster. So uh, after losing uh, the um, Duke of Somerset, uh, that triggered every unit in the army to take uh, courage test, which everybody passed except the billmen, um, and you can see there they've, they've taken that battered markers. They've also retreated. Outside of that, for York, um, they were able to activate their uh, heavy cavalry that were, have now moved up around, you know, really in parallel with, with the uh, uh, unit carrying Lord Clifford there, so they're certainly in trouble. However, <laughs> um, on the Lancaster, uh, Lancastrian side of things, uh, again, priority one, activate that unit of archers, get Lord Clifford off the table. As you can see, they rolled a three. And with no leader left on the table, that's an automatic re uh, end of turn. So this might be it. I think um, the, uh, we're going to play out what happens in the next turn. Obviously, those um, heavy cavalry are going to charge. And uh, that, that might be it. We'll see. Here we go. Goodness me, it's the end of the game. And... It's just calamity for the House of Lancaster. Not only did they see uh, their um, leader be, be killed, but also uh, Lord Clifford uh, was all, has also been recaptured at, at best. Maybe, maybe this was enough for the Yorkists to say enough's enough. But uh, yeah, the, um, the heavy cavalry charged into the unit. They were able to do that, uh, inflicted uh, four casualties. Um, causing again a, a, a courage test, which the archers failed, and uh, why, uh, taking their morale below zero, they uh, they, they flee or routed the game, and that's one of the conditions of this scenario. Is uh, if that happens, they the uh, the other team automatically wins. So um, that played out uh, well. Actually, I'm going to say not as I expected. I actually thought that um, with the with the exception of. Uh, those those archers getting uh, uh, charged by the by the heavy cavalry, that maybe they'd be able to pull this off and, and get him off, the, get Lord Clifford off the table, whilst um, uh, get everyone else was getting shot at by the handgunners or charged by those um, those knights. I did not expect this uh, series of or, or uh, tandem dueling rounds to happen, but it, but it did and. Um, that was that was while well, the first was anticlimactic, the, the second was pretty exciting, and seeing that all play out uh, was a lot of fun. Um, this is a game. I'm not. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not sure it really translates. Or you, you tell me, but uh, I'm not sure it translates so well for battle reports in a in a video format. It's very quick. It's very back and forth. There's a lot of things happening. I guess setting up a camera and just watching the whole thing play out might be a, and you know might be something, but. It would make for a long video, um, and especially just for me solo gaming. I'm, I'm not sure I would uh, be very good at that. So um, uh, anyway, I, I, I did enjoy this. I loved the idea, again, of mixing rule sets and making a little bit of a narrative up as we went along. That was sort of, I was sort of inspired by that. I wouldn't have thought of doing that, again, if my second edition rule book didn't show up. Um, but uh, I had tremendous fun playing this out, and... Uh, Whilst things are certainly not, you know, while I, while I said I'm not uh, intending to, you know, fully campaign a, a, a bunch of games out, at least that wasn't my intent. This was really fun to just connect these two games using different rule sets um, and really kind of building that little story of of, uh, of um, 
uh, trying to rescue uh, Lord Clifford. But um, alas, it wasn't to be. So uh, let's see. Um, I think I would I would certainly like to play another game of this. Uh, um, maybe go a little more unique with the scenarios. I did see another one. I might even uh, again now. Look, like, this is fully in po post game ramble, but. Uh, I think I mentioned in the previous video, I bought that model for the, the, the Perry Miniatures model for the Bombar, that giant cannon, but there are no rules for it. Well, there are, um, or there is a mission, uh, I, it's, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a mission where you're basically trying to defend something, and that might be a, a, a good way to do that, sort of uh, defending the um, defending the Bombard from being stolen or sabotaged by the opposing force. Um, however, one thing I'm sure... Uh, is that the House of Lancaster isn't giving up. They're definitely coming back for more battles. They've certainly are out for blood, certainly Neville blood, after um, after uh, William Neville there doing a, doing the dirty on on um, his uh, his rival part there. So yeah, we're definitely going to see that. Um, I might have to get another uh, <laughs> general painted up too, seeing as Lord Clifford just can't seem to catch a break. Uh, so, you know, that's another fun thing um, to figure out uh, just how that all plays out. But anyway, I'll start rambling. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this entertaining.